For over 40 years now, the Xenomorph and the Predator have terrified audiences worldwide. With the release of Alien Romulus, it's time to look back on a relic of the franchise, one that brought three mortal enemies together for the last time in gaming. Following the original classics in 1986 and 1987 respectively, Alien vs Predator turned out to be a match made in heaven, beginning with the Dark Horse comics in the late 80s and early 90s. It didn't take long for the property to make its way to the video game market, beginning with Alien vs Predator for the Atari Jaguar in 1994. It was a very primitive first person shooter, but it laid the groundwork for the biggest selling point, playing as a marine, alien and predator with dramatically different gameplay styles. The games really hit their stride with Alien vs Predator Classic and Alien vs Predator 2 on the PC. In the early 2000s we were treated to Alien vs Predator Extinction, the only effort into the strategy genre, and two cinematic stinkers with AVP and AVP Requiem. That brings us to AVP 2010, developed by Rebellion and released for the PC, PS3 and Xbox 360. It's notable that the consoles were the lead platforms with a port for the computer. The critics weren't very enthusiastic at the time, giving all versions mediocre reviews. The level designs, creative choices and overall limitations were all heavily criticised. When you put the reviews aside however, this title still offers some entertainment. Many players started with the Marine campaign, which ticks off all the movie references early on. The player battles the Alien Queen as soon as the second mission, and from here it's a fight to escape the planet. The weapons are quite satisfying to use for the most part, with the shotgun and precision rifle having a real kick to them. Using the smart gun for a brief moment is also very enjoyable, and on the whole the Marine campaign is a showcase of how the game effortlessly adapts the original films. The sound of the pulse rifle, the gung-ho nature of the platoon, and the ping of the motion tracker are all nailed from beginning to end. Lance Henriksen reprises his role as Bishop Wayland, which is a real treat for the fans, though it's unfortunate that the twist of him being an android has been reused multiple times through the years. The story that binds all three campaigns together is incredibly thin, but at the same time it doesn't get in the way of the core action. It's only when the game starts sending androids after you that things get a bit generic. The bridge section that leads inside the Predator Temple is also a pain. Shifting gears to the Alien, we have the shortest and simplest campaign of the bunch. As Specimen 6, you'll escape from Wayland Laboratories, free your queen, and start to convert the underground areas into a suitable hive. It's all about the faster movement, crawling into vents and staying out of sight. While the Xenomorph is the only race to regenerate health, you will die very quickly with reckless play. Being able to crawl on the walls is fiddly, but ultimately satisfying when you get the hang of it. Leaping in and out of the shadows while tearing up the puny humans is a big highlight in the early going, with the grisly violence always being on top form. Impaling a marine right through the chest with the alien's tail is the goriest moment by far, and the same also goes for infected other terrified humans with the facehuggers. You'll quickly notice that all the levels are reused across the campaigns, but this is offset slightly by the different ways you move through them. The alien needed more creative scenarios and perhaps different stages of the life cycle to make this campaign more engaging. Where the marine is all about gunplay and the alien is melee focused, the predator blends the two together and is my personal favourite of the three campaigns. It offers a more versatile approach to hunting and executing your foes, while also leaning more into the Predator's mythology. Between blasting enemies with the Plasma Caster and getting up close and personal with the wrist blades, this campaign features the best variety. Getting the combi stick towards the end of the six levels is one of the best moments. It's an insanely powerful tool that can one-shot both androids and aliens alike. Much like the Xenomorph, the Predator is all about the gruesome kills, with every animation being absolutely brutal. With four different ways to rip out a marine skull and spine, and multiple ways to dismember the serpents, you really do feel the strength of this extraterrestrial hunter. The way the predator breaks the alien's back across his knee never gets old, and the final encounter with the pred alien is easily the finest boss fight the game has to offer. It gives you unlimited ammo, allowing you to use every tool at the predator's disposal. It's ironic that the Yaucha are the best part of the single player mode, but some players claimed that this species was the weakest in online multiplayer. In spite of the different campaigns and their individual strengths, all three have some serious bullshit that you'll have to put up with, especially on higher difficulties. For the marines, the acid blood, facehuggers and explosives can be very lethal, resulting in some deaths that are accurate to the films, but also feel cheap. 
The boss fights, with the exception of the alien queen and pred-alien, are also very frustrating. When fighting the predators as the alien, you need to attack them from the right angle, or they'll simply stunlock you to death. As the predator, leaping onto the wrong ledge can result in instant death, and the sheer number of aliens thrown at you can grow tiresome. On regular difficulties, these moments are infuriating, but on Nightmare where you have no checkpoints, it's absolutely maddening. Across the board, the enemy AI is also very lacking, with the aliens merely charging at the player without intelligent movement, and the marines don't react very well to attacks from either of their enemies. As a result of these problems, AVP 2010 is best enjoyed by fans of the two monsters and the wider fiction. It may not have reached the heights of its predecessors or the wider FPS genre, but it still offers some fun for the 5-6 to six hours it takes to play through. The multiplayer was also pretty good in its heyday, with the unique asymmetrical setup resulting in some unique thrills, but good luck trying to find players on the PC servers today. The title now stands as a case of missed potential. 14 years later and the Xenomorph and Predator have never shared another gaming release, and Rebellion were never able to improve and expand with a sequel. It's interesting how the wider AVP franchise tailed off after the 2010 game. Aside from comics like Fire and Stone, Life and Death and Thicker Than Blood from Dark Horse, the two iconic creatures broke off and reverted back to standalone movies. Prometheus, Alien Covenant, The Predator and Prey stand at different levels in the eyes of fans. This has also held true for games, with Aliens Colonial Marines, Alien Isolation and Predator Hunting Grounds all taking a stab with varying results. As a huge fan of both properties, Alien vs Predator deserves a place alongside these efforts, but for now we'll have to make do with older titles. Thanks for watching. Alien vs Predator has had its ups and downs through the years, but it should have maintained its popularity as the films continue to release in theatres. Which game in the series was your favourite? Let me know in the comments below. You can also check out my video on Alien Isolation on my channel.